Kathy Castor. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kathy Castor of Florida, the chair of the House Select Committee on the Climate Crisis. Very honored to be representing the United States of America along with my colleagues here today, including uh, the champions, the climate champions from our climate committee, who you've already said, but I've got to recognize them again, Rep Bonamici, Rep Huffman, Rep Kasten, uh, and Rep Escobar. Uh, they really were part of a historic effort in the United States of America that started uh, way back, but came to fore just a couple of years ago with a broad outreach effort, listening first to the scientists who said, we must act now, we're in a climate emergency and we're running out of time to address the climate crisis. Their work culminated in the Solving the Climate Crisis Action Plan that compiled recommendations from stakeholders all across the country, across the globe, and how the United States of America could tackle the climate crisis. It did become the basis for the Inflation Reduction Act, our historic climate law, and the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, our bipartisan Infrastructure Act, and uh, additional action through the National Defense Authorization Act and our appropriations bills because we have to keep working in everything that we do. But the Inflation Reduction Act in particular uh, allows us to meet President Biden's goals of cutting climate pollution by 50 to 52 percent by 2030 and it keeps us on track of getting to net zero as soon as possible and no later than 2050. And when you reflect upon this last term of Congress, this last, these last two years with President Biden's leadership and the leadership of Speaker Pelosi, the strongest speaker in the history of the House of Representatives, no matter what happens in this midterm election, the most effective speaker of the House in history who has made climate action her flagship issue and has never given up from the time of a decade ago where we voted on another energy uh, climate package that didn't get through the Senate at that time, but we knew what was at stake, our moral obligation to act to reduce climate pollution and to meet our ambitious climate goals. So the Inflation Reduction Act in essence, it cut, cuts cost for consumers and it cuts pollution. And we hope that it can be a model for other countries across the planet uh, to act. Uh, it creates jobs and it addresses the, it helps us avoid the costly catastrophes that we are all experiencing. I come from the state of Florida. We just uh, were hit by another hurricane. The la we, we don't get hurricanes usually in November. And when you f reflect upon the pain and damage in Pakistan with the floods or Nigeria here on the continent of Africa, the extreme heat, the droughts, these are expensive and they come at a time when we're all dealing with global inflation, exacerbated by Putin's unprovoked aggression on Ukraine that has exacted a toll and is raising costs for everyone. And we know the pathway out is clean, affordable energy, not to be tied to petro dictators any longer. So the Inflation Reduction Act helps us along that path. But here we are at COP27, working with countries across the globe in advancing global action, reducing admission, emissions, and enhancing resilience. And now we've all got to build on those outcomes. Time is of the essence to do so. The United States is working hard to ramp up its support for vulnerable nations and developing countries, especially to, res to respond to the climate emergency and implement the Paris Agreement, lower cost for everyone the president has pledged to quadruple climate funding from the Obama administration peak, delivering $11 billion annually by 2024, 
in finance to support countries in their efforts to decarbonize their economies and advance climate-friendly land use practices. Here in the House of Representatives, we have passed in this year's appropriations bill th over $3 billion to keep our promise uh, and to uh, follow President Biden's leadership. We also intend to do more when it comes to enhancing efforts by public, through public and private finance, through the World Bank, through modernization of the IMF, through what we do year after year in the Peace Corps, through USAID, through NASA and NOAA, through building these partnerships that will support our allies in all countries across the planet to meet our moral obligation. I will also want to salute the Special Envoy, John Kerry, who has led with great effectiveness, effectiveness for many years. And he, I hope the other countries will join in what America is trying to lead on, including the, global, the Green Shipping Challenge, the Global Methane Pledge, the First Movers Coalition, the Africa Adaptation Initiative, early warning systems for all, so that we can meet this moment it's a historic moment of climate action out of the United States of America that we're very proud of and we hope it will help us build momentum to cut costs for everyone and cut pollution and meet our moral obligation to save the planet. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And now I want to yield to the distinguished chair of the Energy and Commerce Committee, a committee that has tremendous jurisdiction over, well, if you ask them, they have jurisdiction over everything. But in terms of the meeting that we are at today, I want to thank Mr. Pallone for